Hello, I'm Michelle O'Boyle, President of the Law Society of Ireland. Hi, I'm Ken Murphy, Director General of the Law Society. Welcome to the Law Society of Ireland Annual Report 2019-2020. Here is just a brief snapshot of an extraordinary year for the Law Society and the solicitor's profession. When I took office in November 2019, I was ready, willing and committed to lead the profession through a variety of predictable challenges with the wholehearted support of the Council. And as we all know, an important tool in our armoury of life is to have an ability to change our path, to adjust and to adapt. Never was this more tested than over the last eight months. Resilient, supportive, essential. That's what the profession proved to be to the public when COVID hit right in the middle of March of 2020. One of the great capacities of the legal profession, which is demonstrated throughout history, is its capacity to adapt to change. This was change, sudden, immediate, fundamental change, such as we've never had to adapt to before. The profession adapted and the Law Society adapted in support of it. Resilient, supportive, essential. No part of legal practice and no part of the profession was immune to the inevitable challenges caused by the restrictions necessitated by the state's response to COVID-19. Communication to the profession was my key priority throughout the crucial March to June 2020 period. I issued 34 e-bulletins around a variety of areas, including court arrangements and updates, advice on wills and probate, practice management advice, much needed financial support information, guidance on AML, wardship, family law and much, much more. Working really closely, directly with government and state agencies, finding workarounds for all of the problems that the pandemic created in the delivery of legal services through those state agencies, we worked to find those solutions. But it was important not only that solicitors were able to remain open for business, which they were as a result of law society lobbying of government at the very beginning, but also that the public knew that solicitors were open for business. We communicated that through the advertising campaign relentlessly across the country so that people knew solicitors were open for business and could be accessed for legal services, which were so essential. And the other great theme was the move online. The world moved online and so did the Law Society and with remarkable speed, almost overnight, the professional practice course in the law school moved from an in-person course to an online course. That was amazing that they were able to do it so quickly and also all the other CPD and diplomas and so on, they moved online because you couldn't have physical meetings anymore. But they made that change it's moved online and has its capacity to continue to do so very, very effectively. The Society's focus on the well-being of solicitors was put under the spotlight during the crisis. We prioritised and brought forward a number of key projects, including Legal Mind, a new mental health support for solicitors and their dependents. It is there for you and your colleagues to help navigate any personal or professional challenges. Please do use it. Beyond COVID-19, I welcomed commitments from the new government on a number of priority topics. Long needed commitments to publish a family court bill and assurances on family law court building in Dublin and nationwide were especially significant. The announcement that from the 1st of November 2019, solicitor partnerships would be able to register as limited liability partnerships was a very welcome culmination to a 20-year campaign by the Law Society. 
to modernize the partnership model that the profession needed in the 21st century. Well, we got it. And many dozens of firms have now chosen to do so. It's clearly an option. Nobody needs to do so, but if they choose to do so, they can. Of course, we would like and will continue to pursue the option that individuals, so practitioners who are not partnerships, might have limited liability company status. That's for the future. We haven't given up on it. But for the moment, dozens and dozens of solicitors firms, an ever-growing number, have chosen a modern business model, limited liability partnerships, which protects the personal assets of partners in law firms from the consequences of catastrophic claims that go beyond professional indemnity insurance. This is something worth celebrating because it has been achieved through years and years of lobbying. In July of this year, it was a great honour for me to welcome the historic moment when we as a profession were invited for the first time ever to apply for patents of precedence. As we film this, the first 17 solicitors to become senior counsel have received their patents in an official online ceremony. What a proud moment for the profession and long may we push boundaries and set examples of professional excellence. We have indeed earned the right to do so. Brexit. Regardless of the pandemic, it's happening anyway. And one of the consequences we've seen in recent years is literally thousands of solicitors from largely big international commercial law firms based in England and Wales, England and Wales solicitors transferring onto the role here. This year, that issue was addressed by new education regulations to streamline how that can be done and ensure that the correct protections of the public would exist uh, under such a regime. On the Legal Services Regulatory Authority, we are working really closely and constructively with this new regulator of the profession. It's a cooperative engagement and it is working well in the public interest, um, we believe. We're certainly going to continue with it and we've been pleased with the way the LSRA has equally constructively engaged with us. I want to take this opportunity to thank each colleague who took the time and the trouble to provide valuable feedback suggestions and support. Difficult and complex issues cross my desk and your feedback and your support has been of enormous value to me, the Law Society and the profession. This was a year when the work of the Society's committees and working groups really shone. They came into the limelight and were constantly referenced in the President's bulletins that were going out on a daily basis at the height of the pandemic so far. One of the items that I want to draw your attention to is the Small Practice Business Hub. That allows small firms in particular to access really useful information, much of it designed by expert practitioners from small practices themselves. Take a look at it. If you're a small practice, I believe you'll find something of value within it. Opportunities to meet colleagues across the country has sadly been limited during my term in office. Nevertheless, it has been my privilege to lead the profession at this extraordinary moment in global history. Hopefully, the plan that I have executed demonstrated to you that we are all part of a law society that values and supports its members. And we will continue to do so as we navigate the unpredictable road ahead. Most years don't have a single unifying theme, a dominant one that brings it all together. This one does. The pandemic that hit in March and is still with us is that theme. But it demonstrated and allowed us to demonstrate how resilient the profession and the law society could be to deal with those challenges to date. But more importantly, those challenges continue. We have to continue to be adaptable and resilient and effective in the future. And our commitment is the Law Society will be all of those things for the year ahead, just as it's been in the year past. Thank you for watching.